It's Mo. It's the end of July and it is time to start reading the books that I got for booktube spin number three. I've kind of been working through my summer TBR so I haven't started these books yet. The first book that I got for booktube spin three is Big Bang by David Bowman. Now this one was in my intimidating reads section. It was David Bowman's last book. It was published posthumously. He's calling it like a nonfiction novel and it's like an alternate history having something to do with JFK. I'm not sure what it is. It's long. It's really long. It's David Bowman's last book. It's not really a subject matter I feel like I'm going to be that interested in, but of course I do want to read it. I am not going to be reading this book in this vlog. Because Rick McDonnell did two books for this booktube spin, I think I'm going to split this vlog into two vlogs for the two books. The other book that I got for Booktube Spin Spin 3 was Ernest Hemingway's The Snows of Kilimanjaro and Other Short Stories. This was in my short story and collected works section and it is one that while I do want to read it, I'm not much of a short story collection person so it's going to be a little bit hard for me to get through but I thought it would be fun to read the stories in this book for this vlog and also maybe show you some sea areas by me since I do live by the sea. Ernest Hemingway was a huge fan of the sea. He lived in various islands, uh, most notably I think the Florida Keys uh, at the end of his life. He's quite famous there. I don't know much about Ernest Hemingway. I know that he is problematic and I know that he liked cats. So, you know, balances it out? I don't know. Maybe. There are 10 short stories in this book. I actually did read one of them when I first got this book. I got this book at a library sale last year. I read A Clean and Well-Lighted Place. I don't really remember it. It's only like five pages, but it was, um, about two servers kind of making fun of a gentleman who comes to their cafe every day. Uh, I want to read that one again. I remember really liking it, but I don't really remember the nuance of it, so I definitely will be reading the whole book, including that one again. And then also for this vlog, yesterday I happened to pick up Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. Now I had my eye out for this one because Simon at Savage Reads is doing his Sky Arts book club again, which is like a cyclical book club. They don't do it all the time, but they'll do like episodes of it. So they'll do like six months or four months or whatever it is of the book club, and then they'll take a break and then they'll do another whatever months of the book club. So they are in one of their rounds. I did join the Facebook group, but I haven't actually had a chance to like look at any of the content yet. Uh, but I'm excited because it's more content from Savage Reads and Bernadette Evaristo is picking the classics. So each month they're reading three books, two books that Simon and his co-hosts pick and one classic that Evaristo picks. And the first pick that they chose was The Old Man and the Sea. Now, I think I've read this maybe a long time ago, or maybe I tried to read it, or maybe I was supposed to read it for school, but I really don't remember anything about it at all. It's extremely short. This copy is 127 pages, and this is such a great copy. It's a 1980 copy, but it's like pristine. The cover is lovely. I couldn't find this cover on Goodreads, but I really like it. It has like a little fishing village, but then it has like almost the whole cover is just the sea, which I think is, you know, probably pretty telling of the story. So I'm excited to read this one. I'm going to start this one first because I believe for the Sky Arts Book Club, this was supposed to be read by the end of July. So I'm going to try and finish this in the next couple of days. And I will probably be reading stories from this as well. Having never really read or not remembering reading any Hemingway, this will be a very good opportunity to see if I like Ernest Hemingway and what I think of his writing and what I think of these books. So if you've read Old Man of the Sea, let me know what you thought of it. <sighs> okay, I finished 
finish reading The Old Man and the Sea. Now, I didn't do a lot of check-ins for this because I actually felt that it was a little bit hard to get through. It's an extremely short book, and it is a modern classic, which I love modern classics, but man, this was kind of a tough read. This book follows an old man, and he is down on his luck. He is a fisherman, and he hasn't caught a fish in 85 days. So he is going out to fish, and he is hoping that on this 85th day, he will get a streak of luck and he will catch a fish or two. He used to fish with a young boy, but the young boy's parents made him go to another boat because the old man was so unlucky. The young boy loves the old man and wishes he could still fish with him and still helps him out when he can. But now we're following the old man as he goes out, and on this particular day, he does hook a fish. It's a really big fish, and he struggles to bring it in. He goes against his better judgment and lets this fish kind of tow him out to sea. And then this book follows the three days that he's out at sea struggling with this fish. So it definitely is a fish tale. It definitely is a fisherman's tale. It definitely is a little bit of Moby Dick, man against nature tale. It's very introspective as the man struggles over these days to come to grips with his mortality and his struggles to get things done, to come to grips that he is lonely without the young boy. There's a lot of beautiful writing in this book, and I'm sure that's partly why it became a modern classic. Um, I think there are are obviously the themes of struggle against nature, those themes of looking to oneself. You know, it's a lot about the man thinking about his life, thinking about the trials and tribulations that he's gone through, thinking about the mistakes that he's made, but all in relation to fishing and this fish. It has a lot to do with loneliness and isolation and the idea of being self-sustainable but being alone. This was just such a depressing book. It's depressing because of all those themes, obviously, which makes you think about your own mortality and makes you think about your own abilities and makes you think about who in your life can help you, where they are, and who you've pushed away from helping you at different times in your life. But it's also super depressing because it is a lot about animal death, it has a lot of gruesome descriptions and depictions of killing fish, killing dolphins, killing shark, of cleaning and flaying fish, injury, all put together it was hard to get through because it was so depressing. I think that I did not get everything out of this book that I could have gotten out of it. I think you could take this book at face value, but there's probably also a lot of other themes and lessons to be learned and a lot of nuances that I didn't get upon the first reading. I could definitely see myself rereading this book and getting a different experience from it or getting different knowledge from it. Overall, I enjoyed the writing and I enjoyed some of the descriptive passages, and I enjoyed the book as a whole. Uh, being a super depressing book, it does have sort of an uplifting ending. And then I'm also reading short stories from The Snows of Kilimanjaro. So I finished two short stories, the titular short story, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which is also super depressing. It's about a guy who goes on safari and is dying of gangrene in the foothills of Kilimanjaro. It's super sad. He's like super mean to his wife. It's about the regrets of his life. It's about the things that he did didn't do, the books that he didn't write, the time that he wasted. Very gross depictions of, again, animal death and injury, but, you know, person injury. The next short story I read was the one that I had already read, which was about two waiters and an old man in a cafe. So the cafe is closing and the waiters want to go home, but the old man wants to keep drinking, and the one waiter is really impatient and cuts the old man off and doesn't kind of understand his plight, that he is just a lonely old man and wants a clean, well-lighted place to spend some time so that he is not home alone. The other waiter, the less impatient waiter, understands this and it turns out that he is one of those people as well. So I really liked that short story much more than The Snows of Kilimanjaro, but still super depressing. I 
have read a little bit more of The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which is the short story collection. It has 10 short stories in it, and now I have read one, two, three, four of those short stories. So this one is so hard to get through. All the short stories are so depressing, and I just think that Ernest Hemingway is not for me. I didn't hate The Old Man in the Sea. I liked it fine, but it definitely is not like a favorite modern classic for me. I mean, I, I read The Loved One earlier this year. I read The Sound of Waves earlier this year, and I think those modern classics are much more interesting to me and the, I find the writing more compelling. Obviously Ernest Hemingway is a good writer and obviously his writing can be very evocative. Obviously he has a very specific style. I just don't think that me and that style vibe. I don't love these modern classics. So, the other two stories that I read were A Day's Wait, which is about a dad and a young boy. The young boy wakes up with a fever and the dad is taking care of him. It's just a fever and the son's gonna be fine. It's very, very short. It's only like three pages. So far, it was my favorite, um, well, no, it was my second favorite out of the story, the four stories that I've read. So I think my favorite was A Clean and Well-Lighted Place, which is about uh, the service industry and servers, and then the A Day's Wait is my next favorite out of those. The next story that I read was In Another Country, and this was about a young American soldier in a VA hospital in Milan, and how he associates and identifies with other people from that hospital. So there are other young men that he kind of befriends and they go together because they're kind of hated in the town. And they kind of seek refuge in numbers when they're walking home from the hospital. But those men aren't genuinely his friends because he's American and they won their medals and accolades fairly and because of tra the trauma of war. And he kind of won his accolades and medals because he's American. And then also about an older soldier who he sits next to in the hospital during treatments and the tragedies of that soldier. I mean, okay, so like I liked all these stories. All of them that I read were very interesting so far. They're just so depressing. They make me not want to read them. So I think I'm going to try to read two more stories. That will get me to six stories out of this book. And then if for some reason it all turns around and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I want to read the other four stories out of this book. I will continue to read it. If it doesn't, I think I'm going to stop and put this one aside and call it read and call my booktube spin, spin to part two a success and have this book and be able to read those short stories when I want. I think completing more than 50% of the stories of the book will uh, make this a worthwhile finished read, even if it's also a DNF. I did want to talk for a second about The Old Man in the Sea and how I have been thinking about it and how I have been thinking about it in relationship to The Sound of Waves. I mean, they're very, very different books, obviously. The Sound of Waves is a romance. The Old Man in the Sea is not a romance, although I guess you could call the old man's relationship with the sea is similar to a romance. I've been kind of thinking about these two together and I kind of think they're interesting to read together. Both have this very clear uh, nature writing in them, right? Like a big part of both these books are the descriptions of nature, the descriptions of fish, the descriptions of that industry of fishing, the feel of the ropes in your hand and the cold air and the sacrifice that you go through when fishing is your livelihood or diving is your livelihood. I think that they both have like very beautiful depictions of that lifestyle and that work and I think they both talk about almost a aspiration or promise that working with the sea gives you and a calmness and a 
inspiration that working with the sea gives you. So I thought it was interesting. I, when I think about this book now, I'm also thinking about this book. Again, very different, both modern classics, one from America but set in Cuba, and one from Japan and set in Japan. So I think both of these were, were very cool, both very short, and worth reading. If you've read one, it might be worth reading the other one just to see the juxtaposition and the similarities of them. So I will check in with you when I have read two more short stories in The Snows of Kilimanjaro, and we'll see if I'm going to continue with The Snows of Kilimanjaro or if I'm going to stop there and say that I completed that booktube spin book. was going to happen happened and I read two more stories in The Snows of Kilimanjaro and Other Stories by Ernest Hemingway and I stopped. Now usually I wouldn't call a book complete if I hadn't completed the book but I just cannot read any more short stories and I don't want to read any more Ernest Hemingway right now. I think reading these books was enough for this vlog and I think it was enough to complete my booktube spin. So I think that counts and I think that even though I don't really think it counts, it's going to count. I'm going to call it red. I already marked it red on Goodreads and that's just the way it's going to be. I read six out of ten stories from The Snows of Kilimanjaro. I read about half the book. I really enjoyed uh, this reading experiment. I liked having read a classic American author that I had never read before and I liked seeing what I did like and what I didn't like in his books. It's interesting to note that as I'm finishing this vlog, two videos came out about Ernest Hemingway from booktubers that I really like. Barter Hordes did a video on one of the short stories that's contained in this book called A Day's Wait. This was a really interesting video. It goes a lot into the history of Ernest Hemingway and his marriages and a little bit of the history of some of his reoccurring characters. So I would definitely suggest checking that out, but I would suggest reading A Day's Wait before you see that video. And then Bookish also put out a Ernest Hemingway video in his Where Not to Start With series, which was really awesome. It's a great series in general. I haven't watched all of them, but the ones that I've watched were totally helpful and amazing. And he said not to start with The Old Man in the Sea. He had a lot of interesting things to say about Ernest Hemingway's history as well. So I definitely would suggest checking out Bookish's video Where Not to Start with Ernest Hemingway. Snows of Kilimanjaro was my booktube spin, spin three, the second book that I picked, and I am going to call that a booktube spin win. I'm going to keep this book and maybe read some of the short stories that I didn't read another time, and I'm really glad that I completed The Old Man and the Sea. So I guess my thing with Ernest Hemingway is that like so far, out of the things that I've read, like, I don't enjoy the reading process. Like, I don't like reading the stories that much. There's a lot of death, there's a lot of depression, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of animal violence, there's a lot of animal death, and I guess that was kind of like what he was known for. He was like a man's man, and he went to safari, and he did all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, he was a depressive alcoholic who killed himself, at the end of his life. So they're not fun reads. They're not enjoyable, but I find that after I've read these, I'm really still thinking about them. I'm really still referring back to them in my mind. And I'm interested to read more Ernest Hemingway at some point to see if a lot of his stories are like that and a lot of his novels are like that. I'm really interested to read A Movable Feast, which is a nonfiction about his time living as an expatriate, I think, in Europe. So I think that would be interesting, too, to see, like, not how his life and depression are translated into fiction, but how his life and depression are translated into real life. I think that'll be interesting. 
Booktube Spin Spin 3, part one, down, or part two, depending on how you look at it. Thanks again to Rick McDonnell. I love the Booktube Spin. How did you do on Booktube Spin Spin 3? Did you choose to pick two books? Did you choose to read two books? Have you finished them? Have you completed them? Let me know in the comments below if you've read any Ernest Hemingway and what you think of him. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.